Welcome back, everyone. This is hour 22 of 24 Hours of Rare. We are very excited to have two awesome groups with us right now. Uh, from the Kingdom of Bahrain, we have Dr. Christina, Sarah, and Hassan. Sarah and Hassan are medical students uh, at the uh, Arabian Gulf University of Bahrain. And then we also have Rare Disease Kenya with, with Christine and Rosalind and have joined us. So I'm going to turn over this now to uh, Dr. Christina from the, the Kingdom of Bahrain for their presentation. Uh, hope you all enjoy it. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, everybody. We are very glad having us with you. Um, we are all celebrating Rare Disorder Day. Uh, I'm together with two very dedicated students, Miss Sarah and Miss Hassan. They are senior students, and they will present what we've done in the last eight years in Bahrain. Sarah, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Christina. Uh, ladies and gentlemen all over the world, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon from wherever you are joining us today. Joining you from Bahrain, Sarah Larabi, along with our great leader, Agnes Inspiration, Dr. Christina, and my colleague and dear friend, Hassan Al Musawi. Today we are here to represent our hardworking Bahrain Rare Disease Awareness Team. First of all, I would like to take a moment uh, to thank my city med team and rare disease organization for inviting us and introduce the Bahrain Rare uh, side to you at, massive, uh, at the massive celebration of rare disease that is taking place today. Uh, it is a great honor to take place uh, in this global celebration of rare diseases to honor and support our great fight, uh, fighters and real heroes. Me and my colleague Hassan, today we will try to introduce to you our continuous effort throughout the past eight years to raise the awareness and to reframe the community and to reframe the community perspective of rare diseases both locally and internationally. Me uh, at the beginning of our journey at February 2013. Uh, our main aim was to introduce uh, rare diseases to our community, and our main target was the people who needed it the most, the rare disease patients themselves. We wanted to deliver the message that you are not alone. We understand what you are going through, and we are going to help you. Do not give up. There is hope. Our campaign started from the malls, trying to reach as much patient, uh, as much patient as we can. Uh, it started from a, three, uh, a team for three people, Dr. Christina, Ms. Fatma, and Ms. Buthena, who works at the Johara Center, trying to introduce how to define rare disease, how does it present, how does it diagnose, and who you can reach for help. In 2014, and it, which is the year that I joined, and I was just a final year secondary school, uh, student, um, our team got a, uh, got a, uh, got bigger. We started from a team of three people, but now we are a team from more than thirty people from different backgrounds and occupations: patients, human resource managers, media officers, medical students, professors, doctors. We are all aiming to establish a platform to help the rare disease community in Bahrain and the world. And I modestly say that we managed to accomplish our goal as patients started to reach out for us after the series of events we've been holding. After three years of our campaign in the mall, we decided that we would like to widen our target population. We wanted the community as well to understand their needs and to take their rules to help the rare disease patient. Embrace them, help them to cope and direct them to, to the right channels so they take an active part in the platform we created. So we started to visit the health centers, schools, and we introduced them to the general concepts of prey diseases and their rule to help and how can they help. We also believe that the, cha that the change we wish to see in the hand, it is in the hand of the young generation. So in the past four years, we design a series of events and competition to implement the awareness of rare diseases from a very young age. And I mean it when I say a very young age. 
or can be targeted people at the age of four year olds even. One example of our structured campaign toward kids is an event that we held in 2019, which is called the Story Time, at the month of rare diseases, as we invited primary school children from the age of eight to 11 years old, and we presented to them the concept of genetics and rare disease and in a simplified language. In a form of a story, at the same time, we try to reinforce their acceptance to the differences surrounding us and the community spirit within them and more other activity which all directed toward the same aim from different competitions and activity. At the end, I would like to thank the rare disease patients for what they have taught me. From you, I learned to be patient, strong, and most importantly, to never lose faith. From you, I have learned to always appreciate the blessings that surround us and not to take anything for granted. From you, I learned that there is nothing in life that can break us. I can say that being a member of Bahrain Rare Disease Day uh, uh, shaped my personality and uh, the doctor I will become, and I am so thankful for this opportunity. Thank you so much, and I will leave the floor to my colleague Hassan now. Thank you, Sarah, very much for sharing from uh, your experience of joining our team for such many years. Sarah joined us. Uh, when she was in high school because her her brother was our student her brother finished now is he's an, uh, a resident doctor but she continued with us all her um, medical years i would like to invite hassan to present his contribution and his view of being a part of the medical student team Hello, how are you? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace, mercy, and blessing of God. First of all, I would like to thank my dearest friend, Sarah Al-Arabi, for this excellent compliment. I always dreamed of being a doctor since I was a little kid, to wear a white coat and put a stethoscope over my neck. But after I joined the rare disease team in 2015, this amazing team, led by Dr. Christina, I learned that a doctor should be a human before he becomes a doctor. And during my experience in the rare disease, I saw many real difficult medical cases through which I learned wisdom and patience to see how they live and what are they suffering daily from. So I wanted to have a unique imprint in facilitating their efforts and educating the community about rare diseases and how to support researchers to help to diagnose. We want to bright future generation in the Kingdom of Bahrain so we focus also on youth and how to build our nations. I will touch on the side of social media that have expanded the field of us to reach a great number of society groups and patients. After we prepared our page on Instagram a few years back, we got to know the community more. It was an area of awareness and science. And recently, we prepared a competition for five days that contains questions about rare diseases. And yesterday, we announced the name of the winners. In addition of many personal interviews with patients and their families, we wanted to show people that these people that they are living with a rare disease, they are always unique. They are not different. And it also allowed us to get to know more patients, inspire them, and to be in contact with them and support them. In addition, Bahrain TV, our local TV, welcomed us several times by conducting interviews with our team members 
as well as newspapers and journals. In the end, we would like to thank all our supporters in Arabian Gulf University and Al Jawhara Center, as well as all the students who founded and supported this team. And we would like to thank you for hosting us in this distinguished historical event. وفي الختام لا يسعنا إلا أن نتقدم بالشكر الجزيل إلى جامعة الخليج العربي ومركز الأميرة الجوهرة على دعمهم المتواصل للفريق والمرضى ومساهمتهم في بناء مستقبل واعد ومثقف شكرا لكم إلى اللقاء goodbye and hope to see you all soon in Bahrain thank you so much Thank you very, very much, Hassan, for this very inspiring talk. I hope that the audience is getting a flavor from what you as medical students experienced all these years. And uh, one of the messages that we use it on our T-shirts is that none of all of us are air and none of us are less. And we want to share this with the world in a way in which all people who are hearing us now are understanding that it's on our hands to make the society, the communities, to understand that we are all different and we are all of value. Thank you. I'd like to, to continue presenting a bit of the scientific things that we've done over the years uh, in Bahrain. Are you seeing my screen? Do you know if they are seeing my screen? Yeah. Dr. Christina, we're not seeing your screen yet. Just one second. We will um, we'll just arrange this immediately. Because our campaign starts from the beginning on two branches, we wanted to raise the awareness for the healthcare and the medical community and in the same time to increase awareness for the general population regarding what rare disorders are. Are you seeing my screen now? Yes, I so can see started, you. Thank you. We started in uh, 2013 with a big symposium together with the Ministry of Health in Bahrain and we had the honor to have His Excellency the Health Minister and also the President of the Arabian Gulf University and uh, head of the Al Johara Center for Molecular Genetics and uh, Inherited Disorders. And we had more than 400 participants, um, medical care, doctors, nurses, people involved more or less in um, the care of um, rare disorder patients. That was the start. And then in 2014, we had various activities, a part of the um, regular um, campaigns we run on the main malls in Bahrain. We, we work with different groups and also with the entire um, academic staff in Arabian Gulf University who all supported the move of rare disorders. In 2015, we went even more into the press and we had a big um, magazine who dedicated uh, a lot of pages uh, towards um, bringing hope in rare disorders and understanding better what are rare disorders, how you can diagnose a rare disorder, which are the experts available, which are the center where the patients can go, and how us all together can support the family of rare disorders. In 2016, we opened the open evening for rare disorder patients and their families. And in Al Johara, we started from um, from that time um, onward to help this kind of activities where we invited medical teams and collaborators from different hospitals and clinics in Bahrain who are dealing with rare disorder patients. And also we invited rare disorder patients, uh, kids, adults and their families to create a bond and understand how we can help more. We are very glad 
that the Rebbe Gulf University, the media department, help us a lot to spread the awareness and the newspapers and televisions, as exactly as Hassan just said, have been very interested in all our events and help us more increase the awareness. In 2017, we opened um, a different glance on the rare disorders and we held a very interesting innovative specialized or shop for the rare disorders registries and national plans and we invited top experts from all over the world to help us to understand how we can initiate rare disorders registries and plan here in Bahrain. In the same time we had a series of um, scientific seminars in various topics of rare disorders in myopathies, neuromuscular disorders, metabolic disorders and we've been also invited guests in different um, scientific activities held by the hospitals around or clinics around, trying to help uh, spread the awareness for rare disorders and also to um, increase the level of knowledge the medical corp is having into this regard. As I said, we continue to have each year the open evening in the month of February. We always aim to have this on 28th of February to give much more hope for patients and their families, continuing to have um, our gathering. Also, in the same time, to keep updating um, the knowledge and the results from the science in this field, the genetic disorder translating research into clinical practice. We had it in uh, February 20 in 2018. And then we tried to have um, to bring to the medical care um, all news from the research regarding the treatments, new treatments available for various uh, genetic disorders. Also, in the big conferences that the center and the university held it, we always had a spot and a section for rare disorders. Um, and this was excellent because on all our conferences, um, more than 500 people are coming from the entire uh, Middle East region. So that with these occasions, we've been able to spread more um, the awareness and um, what we are doing in this regard. In 2019, we continued to, to keep the open evenings and also to have various scientific activities. We had a big international pediatric conference held exactly on the day of the rare disorders. And as usual, the spot allocated for the rare disorder team was big. And we've been able to discuss various topics and we had a big contest for the doctors, participants from all over the world. And um, was very interesting that they enter into the contest, not so much with the willing to win the latest book in genetics, but to prove themselves that they are updated, then they are able to recognize some of very, very rare genetic syndromes. As I always said, we also had participation from our side as scientists and let's say genetic experts. We've been invited guests in various um, scientific events who took place in Bahrain. We've been a guest in, in Born Errors of Metabolism Conference who was held in a different um, big hospital here in Bahrain. And we also invited our colleagues to participate in the prospects of genetic diagnosis, an international and a Bahraini perspective workshop. In 2020, we continued, the, uh, continued our activities. Some help me with this. But um, uh, unfortunately, our, um, our big campaign in the mall had to be canceled because of the COVID. But we've been able to continue to keep connected our um, good relationship with the, with the patients and with their families. And as uh, Hassan and Sarah already presented, we moved online this year and we have a very big page on the Instagram and on all media channels. And with the help of the media in um, Arabian Gulf University, we've been able to continue to, to be active. And of course, there are plenty other things to do. We are on the way to open a rare disorder support group for patients and families and to continue the open evenings that we initiated years back on online to try to keep a better connection with the families 
and with the patients and to see which other new opportunities are there in order to help more and to serve their needs. I'm very glad to, to say that we started with, um, with a very small team, but over the years we reached more than 40 people involved in the Rare Disorder Day awareness team. And a lot of students came voluntarily over the years. They took from their free times. They came in weekends. They became very innovative. And I think we started to make a difference. I will invite Sarah and Hassan to come in the end to, to conclude. And we are very, very happy that you allocated a spot for Bahrain. And we hope to meet you again in the years to come with more news and um, better outcomes regarding patients and their families with their disorders and also with our scientific activities. Hello again. Uh, we would like to thank you all for having us today and we wish that we showed you the rear side of Bahrain. We are so happy to join you today and for the rare disease patient, always be an inspiration for us and be strong. Thank you so much for having us. It was an honor and a pleasure to meet such a, um, such great people that they spend all their time and life to, to spread the awareness and to help people who are living with a rare disease. I hope to see you soon and um, I hope to be a role model like you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Or our best greetings from Bahrain. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Christina. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Hassan. Uh, it has been such a great privilege to have you all uh, presenting today. Uh, well, what an honor. And uh, we'll, we will definitely be in touch and talk to you about our rare fair uh, it's a virtual event also that comes up in September for you and Kenya both, but it has just been, this was fantastic material. Thank you for sharing. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move now and show a short uh, video presentation about rare disease Kenya, and then we will turn the floor over to uh, Christine and Rosalind. He's always smiling and he tries really hard at physiotherapy. Crazy. There's a place where we go, it's a very natural, open place. He just goes and she relaxes, to have fun, commune with nature. I know it sounds all deeply deeply, but that's kind of what we do. My son is called Morgan. He has Jubea syndrome. He is three and a half years old. My name is Elizabeth Jerry. I have my skin and gravel. We found a dread for the Kenya so that you could help that parent in the village who doesn't know what is going on, who thinks that they have been cast because of our disease. Just to create awareness, help the people behind us and also to, to reach out to those who do not have information. Before I got there, I had really moved around to find out what is going on with my baby because all the tests that I'm doing, they say you're normal, everything is working just fine. But then you're not feeling okay, you're falling. Randomly. Morgan was born looking okay physically, uh, 10 fingers, 10 toes. He got diagnosed after he was born. And as the journey started, it was getting to grips with how he was able to face 
special needs child. We wanted to make it easier for the people who are coming after us and seeing the challenges that everybody is facing with rare diseases with multiple diverse conditions, bringing them together and just share our experiences and not have to go through the journey alone. The challenge always begins from the moment I wake up. Getting out of bed sometimes is a, is a challenge. Dressing, I have to fight with my clothes just to get them on. And yeah, food, sometimes you have to struggle because you know your, your hand is a voluntary muscle. The daily challenges we face with organ have changed over the years. Initially, it used to be a lot of medical emergencies and we spend a lot of time in hospital. Now it is stabilized. It's more about physiotherapy and schooling and how you be doing in school and what kind of school we'd like to get into. What can expect from the government, for example, is newborn screening as a protocol whereby we can ad address most of these conditions. Also, we can have a registry for the different rare conditions in Kenya. We can also have subsidized fees for our specialists. Basically, healthcare as a whole should be subsidized to make it more affordable for those living with drug conditions because they are mostly chronic. I got to start doing crochet as a skill, started learning and kind of calmed calm me down. And when I found out I could actually sell myself and people actually bought and they were good, it has kind of given me a purpose. Because they didn't have that for a while. Learning to walk and we've been taking him through his step. So seeing him trying his very best really makes you a hard work. The last thing I think we can expect from Rare Disorders Kenya is a more robust organization that is fighting for the rights of the marginalized in Kenya. All right, well, I want to welcome to the stage uh, Christine and Rosalind from Rare Disease Kenya. Uh, looking forward to uh, what you have to share uh, about your country. Thank you, Jeff. Um, our country is beautiful. Today is sunny. And um, Rare Disease Day aside, we all welcome you to visit Kenya and see our beautiful wildlife and landscape. That aside, Rare Disorders Kenya is a patient-led organization that offers um, support platform, creates awareness, and basically fights for the marginalized, that means those with people living with rare diseases. Um, Rosalind, my colleague, co-founder as well, um, kindly just take us through the presentation for the day. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm going to put my camera on just a bit for now and then switch it off so that I can be able to present without any hitches in terms of internet. So Karibuni Sana, that means welcome. Uh, and I'll get into it. Let me share my screen now. Can we all see? Hello? Yes, it looks good. Awesome. So I'm going to give a rare, uh, rare diseases perspective, the Kenyan perspective of what's happening in the country, and then get into what RDK has been doing. RDK is Rare Disorders Kenya. So how is care organized in Kenya for rare diseases? Unfortunately, there's no specific coordination of care for rare diseases. The first time we met like, the Ministry of Health and they were wondering, what are we talking about? Are we talking about the neglected tropical diseases? 
And now we have to tell them that there are 6,000. It was so eye-opening for them. And they were like, okay, they've never heard of this. But a good thing, they were willing to work with us. And they sent us to uh, an organization that called NCD Alliance of Kenya, which is an alliance of different um, uh, what is it, advocates and people dealing with non-communicable diseases, because that's where we were placed under. Majority uh, of people here receive care from the public sector. Unfortunately, that accounts for insurance in terms of insurance coverage is 20% of the population is covered with an insurance, of which 11% is public and 9% is in the private. So people have to, the rest of the uh, population, when you're looking at around 80%, they do not have any type of cover. So they rely on family and friends when they have a health crisis or they need to pay their medical bills. So a lot of it is out of pocket. Healthcare currently is fragmented in the country with an attained ratio of healthcare, health practitioners to population. So you find the number of doctors per uh, number of uh, population is quite low. Uh, there's an equal distribution of health, facility, uh, health facilities. Sorry, So people have to travel a long distance so that they can get uh, Healthcare. There's frequent strikes by uh, healthcare practitioners for one reason or another because they are either their salaries are not being met or they're not being increased. So this causes quite a disruption in people living with rare diseases and they expect to get care. Currently, support groups tend to fill the gaps in some places. So we find that people who have either recently been diagnosed and they're looking for someone else with the same rare disease, they find a home uh, for especially disease specific. Uh, support groups that are currently in the country. Let's, for example, take care of um, uh, muscular dystrophy. So they have their own support groups. So when people come to us and they do not have a specific disease support group for their condition, we always ask them to join the international groups who can be able to give them like the nicknames of daily living, uh, what should we call, um, ways of how to overcome or what to do. Sometimes even the doctors don't have this information. So we tend to also refer them to doctors or clinics or places where they can get better health care and possibly sometimes at a cheaper rate. Currently, priority is given to communicable diseases such as HIV, AIDS, TB, and malaria. Unfortunately, rare diseases are really low on the priority list, if at all they're in that list. Our top biggest needs currently in the country is awareness. Awareness in the public by health professionals and policymakers. A lot of people do not know about rare diseases, but it's changing slowly by slowly with the rare disease day events that we hold each year. They become bigger and bigger. And recently we had a tweet from the Ministry of Health in Kenya tweeting about rare diseases. That's a huge thing for us because now they're starting to have that conversation and realize that that they are rare diseases and something needs to be done about it. Currently, there's no research uh, or information about rare diseases. We don't know what type of rare diseases are there, uh, how many there are there, where are they you know, concentrated in. So there's a lot of research. We do not have a definition of rare disease as a country. So a lot needs to be done. And we are starting to just scratch the surface with this. We also do not have a registry that you can use to evaluate and improve the delivery of care for different people. Like, for example, in the country, we notice that we have a bit more of muscular dystrophy, um, a, a bit more people with myasthenia gravis. However, there are some rare diseases that are still very rare. Some of the positive aspects of our healthcare system is that the public sector, all diseases are catered. However, uh, their clinics are far and wide, and if they are, the type of care might not be the best. However, they will cover to some extent. <clears throat> There's currently a commitment by the president for universal health coverage. And they've been, the president has put healthcare as the big four agenda. However, a lot of needs to be done, but at least anything that has US UHC on it, they're willing to listen. Whether it's in the research or in different forums of health, people are willing to listen as long as you stamp it as universal health care coverage. 
There are research institutions which are well known, like Cam Camry, which is the government arm of uh, research that has a lot going on, and we partnered with them. I'll come to that later on some of the research that we need to do in the country. The emerging opportunities due to COVID, such as telemedicine, so people no longer have to travel so far. At least you get to see a doctor and they're able to either give you a prescription refill or tell you what to do. And when it's very necessary, then at least you can be able to come in. Uh, during COVID, around last year, even the top private hospitals would reduce the cost of consultation to about $7 for a consultation, coming down from around $40. Biggest challenges we face in accessing healthcare currently is that there's delayed treatment and misdiagnosis. So you find um, people are going for long before they get a diagnosis. By the time that they do actually get, if they're lucky to get a diagnosis, the disease has advanced way beyond point of no return. And we're looking at palliative care. Um, sometimes even people will travel abroad like India in search of answers. So there's a high medical cost of travel just to see a specialist. There's high medical cost, as mentioned, and people have to pay out of pocket. And some of these diseases need quite a lot. It feels like you need to win a lottery just to manage them. There's lack of awareness among medical professionals. Uh, even that conversation about rare diseases, that is unknown to them. Inaccessibility of some of the Specialists, for example, currently we do not have a genetic counselor in the country. We recently got a pediatric geneticist who's making some inroads in, in the healthcare and providing that needed information about genetics. But a lot needs to be done. And even if you get the specialists, you'll find that they're concentrated in the urban areas, such as the capital, Nairobi. So people far and wide in the corners of the countries have to travel quite a long distance to just come and see a specialist. There's lack of coordination of care for patients. So you find that you have to do like project management for your own disease, assuming if it's for a child or yourself. So you have to see, you end up seeing different doctors and managing, like we come from here, you have to tell this one what this one said. This, this, all these doctors won't be having a conversation. So the burden of care is on you to ensure that you, you know, you're constantly managing one doctor from the other one. So especially when you have flare-ups or a crisis, you're kind of left alone and trying to decide which doctor do you go to. And especially if you do not have the, some knowledge of how uh, medical care works, you're really left at a loss. The social cultural factors unique to Africa where people keep believing that it's, it's witchcraft or, um, that you need, your faith is not enough. So they tend to look for alternative uh, measures for a cure for rare diseases than when they need to first of all start by going to the doctor, try and get those uh, drugs, or at least try and get a diagnosis. By the time they do uh, revert to the healthcare system or start looking to it, the disease has progressed way, way far beyond. So who are we? We are a patient-led organization Rose, that creates our... Sorry. Sorry, let me interrupt you. The slide hasn't yet changed. Okay. Has it now? Not yet. Are you still in the delayed treatment and diagnosis? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And now? Mm, not yet. Is everyone else just seeing? Is it possible to maybe just stop sharing and reshare from the next slide? Okay. Sorry for that. Okay. Everybody can see? No, no, it's still on the same side as before. Jeff, what can you see? Hello. Hello. It's still on I the previous the, slide. I can, yeah. Yes, Christina. 
I can what see. Can you... Right. I saw the slide with everything and I was following uh, Rosalind. So now this is the positive aspects of our healthcare system. And then you started to speak. Right. Then the next Can line. you see everything? So are you seeing this? Are no. you seeing who we are? Yeah. No. I see the same, who we are. And you started to speak that you are um, a patient organization who started. Ah, OK. okay. Christine? <laughs> yeah. Christine? There might be a problem with your network, Christine. Okay, so since Christine is aware about uh, this, about uh, it's okay. Uh, I'll continue because Christine is aware of what we're presenting. So we're a patient-led organization that creates awareness and advocates for people living with rare diseases in the country. Uh, our objectives are to create awareness about rare diseases from the public to the health sector to even the Ministry of Health, among others, and even research. And we work with even research institutions and pharma groups to just bring awareness in whatever sector that they are. Uh, we promote research and data collection. Currently, uh, we've gotten a grant from Cambridge, Africa, under Alborada Fund with Cambridge to conduct a workshop on rare diseases in the country, which will set up as a roadmap for future research in terms of definition of what where rare diseases, what are rare diseases and how do we want to handle them as a country. We work with others, international institutions, so that we can be able to sort of refer some of our members who are living with certain conditions. For example, we've worked recently with IGA, which is International Gosha Alliance, in getting drug sponsorship getting our members into drug sponsorship programs that has for the much needed very expensive enzymes we have a support group uh, that has about 60 members that of different rare diseases so we create a support network for them that in case of anything so you find like that maybe they're looking for a neurologist they're looking for a certain doctor or they're looking for equipment and so when they ask uh, then we can be able to refer them to the right so we act like a referral system. Our achievements so far is that our awareness has been growing each year. Uh, so we started in 2014 as just marking the rare disease day. And in 2018, we decided to start Rare Disorders Kenya with Christine so that we can address the needs that are there the rest of the year. Before, we'll just make a big thing for rare disease day and you know get people to know about rare diseases and activities and the rest of the year nothing really quite happens but this time with the commission of rare disorders kenya we are now able to engage like different stakeholders we forge new links as i've mentioned with like iga among other organizations like preda willy syndrome we've joined uh NCDAC, which is the alliance for non-communicable diseases in the country that helps to amplify our voices regarding rare diseases. We are also an affiliate member of Rare Disease International. And um, we currently with uh, RDR, we have collaborative global network for rare diseases as experts, a panel of, we've joined the panel of experts to set up centers of expertise in, in the region. So we're starting to have that conversation and we can be able to have doctors network in terms of rare diseases in the country to set up systems to even other things in future, possibly even when you're looking at strategic plan and many other, there's unlimited potential under that. I've talked about the rare disease workshop that we'll have meet this year. And currently we've collected about 50 conditions. We know that there are many, many, many more. Uh, these are the ones that we know for sure, but a lot of information needs to sort of diffuse to different people. So doctors either have some of these conditions, they are yet to come together. One of the other achievements that we attained the last last week, part one, is that we had a CME, which is continuous medical education, with 800 doctors. And for the first time, you could hear them coming out. We had doctors from different countries, the whole, the whole Kenya. And we're having that conversation of what are rare diseases and telling them what needs to be done. And you could hear there was a lot of hope and people wanting to know more. This year, we went a bit 
big, bigger than last year, and we had the UAP building illumination uh, to mark the rare disease day, and that got quite a bit of awareness. We had the government tweeting in. Uh, we were the first country to light up. Uh, it was the first country in Africa to light up. So a lot is being done, and we hope to do much, much more. Thank you. That ends my presentation. Thank you, Rosalyn. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Very, very interesting. All your efforts to that you are doing in Kenya. Impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank both groups. And we see this. I, I do have, uh, you know, Rosalind and, and Kristen, thank you so much for sharing uh, with it. I think you've identified a lot of uh, a lot of opportunities and a lot of uh, barriers and struggles that you're, you're going through right now. Uh, one question that I have for both groups uh, with this is that what technology is available? I know that, you know, Christine, you talked about in Kenya trying to develop a registry. Uh, what technologies are available to uh, to the Kenyan population that have rare disease? Uh, you know, it's like mobile phones, uh, that type of thing where they can participate in the registry. And then, uh, Dr. Christina, what's available in uh, in Bahrain uh, for for people? Okay, um, I, I must say in Kenya we are advanced when it comes to technology in terms of like almost a lot of the urban population has a phone. The only problem comes in when it comes to access of data in terms of network. So maybe that would be the shortfall for trying to use the mobile phones. To, to collect data from people because especially in the rural areas or in the low income areas, a lot of people don't have um, mobile data or internet for that matter. So that creates like a disadvantage to those in the low income area. I don't know if I've missed out something, Rosalind. Rosalind? Right, thank you. Okay. Yes, exactly. sorry, I'm here. Yes, so um, if you look at East Africa, there's quite a bit, we're kind of advanced in terms of uh, technology. It is there. Sometimes it's just that uh, it's maybe it's uh, it's in pockets. Like, yes, as Christine said, a lot of people have phones that they can be able to just, you can go to Dr. Google, so to speak, to get information. And it's just that we need to adapt the systems to contextualize it to our how we work you know what i mean so yes a lot needs to be done dr yeah. christine what do you see in the, the, the king of bahrain so in bahrain people are having access to high level of medical care and in terms of rare disorders there is a quite good channel from the primary care to the secondary care and to the level of the Ministry of Health. So there is a big genetic unit in a governmental hospital. We are a, an, an, an institute of genetics belonging to an university and we have our university medical clinics. So over, overall, the awareness about rare disorders is there and patients are having access to health care. Everybody has a phone and almost everybody has a computer. And Bahrain, it's a tiny country, so the, the number of population is 1.2 million, and more than 500,000 are expats. What I want to say is that the difficulties here are mainly related with diagnosing in time very, very rare disorders. And I don't know how much how it is in Kenya, but in, in Bahrain, because of the Middle East and the high consanguinity, there is kind of a pool of very rare founder genetic disorders. Some of them are more, more prevalent comparing in other parts of the world. So a lot of neurometabolic disorders, uh, SMA and uh, Neiman Peak disease and uh, MSUD and others. So 
the patients are having access to the right kind of care, but sometimes it's difficult to get the right genetic testing in the right time. Like in other countries in the Middle East, the genome country projects are starting, and this will bring a big plus for diagnosing genetic disorders. In terms of care, that's a lot to do, like in other parts of the world, and access to the medicine and to the orphan drugs, this is possible uh, in line with the uh, Ministry of Health, um, what, what the Ministry of Health is providing. But I know that there are patients with rare disorders, a lot of metabolic disorders, who are receiving the treatments that are available in other parts of the world. Well, I want to thank you both. Uh, you know, I want to thank everyone, you know, Dr. Christina, uh, Sarah, Hassan, uh, Christine, and Rosalind. This has been fantastic. Uh, thank you all so much for your time today and your presentations and telling us about what's going on in your in your countries and uh, sharing this with a, with a global audience. Thank you so much. And we look forward to staying connected to you and uh, just staying in touch. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Jeff. Too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Thank you.